Okay, guys. So let's let's uh, let's continue where we left off last week. You have the microphone, Miriam. You have the microphone. Okay. So uh, um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about food again. We're gonna continue to talk about food. So those of you uh, uh, want to know about food and meat and all this and that, that's actually what we're gonna address tonight. So let's let's see what we have. Okay, go ahead, Miriam. Because this is the generation that is supposed Yes. Okay. Because this is the generation that is supposed to bring the Messiah, because we have the strongest desire, unfortunately our desire needs to be shifted from a desire for the self alone. Only this generation can make it. Look at the level of desire we have today. Look at children from the time of birth. They want everything. We just need to shift their desire to one of sharing. Do not limit their desire. When a child asks for an iPod, say, is that all you want? Want to own the company. <laughs> the idea is the desire should not be limited. Desire is a very important thing. Now, desire, now the whole idea of desire is, is a healthy thing to have. Without desire, basically we have nothing. Desire is the vessel, desire is the beginning of everything. Now, when we are talking about eating, so... In the time of Adam and Eve, before the sin, food was corrected in the level without needing to eat any meat. But with the time, with the time of correction, after Adam, things start to get corrected. And we still need to correct of all the animals that die during the flood. We elevate their soul. So now, after we know why we eat meat, okay, we need to eat, know why do we eat kosher meat, okay? There is, there is a reason for that, okay? Let's try to explain that, okay? Please. Why do we eat kosher? It is very difficult to elevate the other animals. Animals that are not kosher are so deep in the clipote that we cannot elevate them. Pig is chasir, the same as the word chisir. Chaisar. Chaisar. Good. That means strange animals which means pig belongs to the dark side and no matter how much you eat it you cannot elevate it even a kosher animal is difficult to elevate and it cannot be done without consciousness kavanot which is why some kabbalists in the talmud say that we should only eat meat on shabbat because on shabbat even without the consciousness we can elevate the souls there is elevation of the souls in everything we eat on Shabbat. Just know not to come starving and not to come without eating. Okay, so food, we studied last week that food is a very important way to elevate soul that basically been um, reincarnated into animal. So our job is slowly, slowly to start elevate the food. Step by step, we're elevating the, the spark that fell into the klipa, into the dark side, we elevate it. Every time you chew food, every time you eat food, there is a spark of light within that food. And that spark came from some tikkun, some karma, some things that those people didn't do in a good way. And that's why it fall into the animal kingdom. And our job, what are we eating, is to elevate it. Now, kosher animal. What's the difference between kosher animal and non-kosher animal? Basically, the kosher animal is animal that's been chosen to be that the spark of light will be there and when you eat when you chew the food the spark of light can be elevated to a higher level in an easier way which is non-kosher animal we take in we take in for example the the word uh, uh, chazir which is mean pig which come from the word strange animal okay we all love you know we all love uh, uh, what people love to eat uh, 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 they, they love to eat the things in breakfast the, uh, yeah, bacon, I mean, that's, that's like the most famous things, I mean, right, I mean, in, in America. But the point is, it's very difficult to elevate it. It's impossible to elevate the light within it. And if you just want to eat, to eat the food, it's okay. But if you want to eat, to elevate the spark of light that's within it, so it, the spark can help you, it's a different story. So eating kosher is not just for the religious reason, it's a, for spiritual reason. It's not like they make it all Jewish things, you eat, you eat kosher. By the way, I don't know if you know, but the most kosher food is delivered to the Bible Belt. I don't know if you know that. More than to the Orthodox Jewish community. 
they eat more kosher than actually the, that, uh, that uh, the people I just found out last, last night in a wedding. I get all explanation about it. I'm, I'm shocked. I mean, there is people who practice actually kosher food way more than, than the Jewish community. They doing it for because the Bible says so, but without a spiritual understanding that it truly within the kosher food you have a spark of light that you can elevate. Within a regular food you cannot elevate it. Which means, if somebody is reincarnating a dog, dog is not a kosher animal. Okay, so the dog has to go to a 12 years or 13 years, then he die, and then he may be reincarnated into kosher animal. And then when somebody eat that kosher animal, okay, then it will be able to elevate that spark of light. Okay, so I'm just want to share that that we get out of the religiosity of kosher. Do not go into Jewish religiosity of kosher. It's coming from spirituality. Elevate, spark. Now I know that food kosher food not always tastes the best. Okay, you know, you like the steak to be not kosher. Also that you know the way the animal being slaughtered, it's without suffering. So when you have a steak that comes from kosher animal, you know it's it's the meat that you eat is not about the religious stuff, it's about the animal suffer, let's say, less. So when you eat it, you take that energy into your body, then there is less suffering for your soul. So everything is cause and effect. It's not a religious thing. It's not a healthy thing. Many people think if they eat kosher, they will stay healthy. No. Uh, red meat has still cholesterol, even if it's kosher. So don't let somebody sell you that it's about health. It's not about health reason. It's not about religious reason. It's only about spiritual reason. And those of you are afraid that uh, God will strike you dead if you eat non-kosher, that's also not true. God have no business with it. It's for us, for a person who want to help another soul to be elevated once the soul has been reincarnated into uh, an animal. And we continue with that. Okay. Go ahead. Another reason. Another reason not to eat meat is because the souls of human beings with the most difficult clipote no. murderers must come back too. <laughs> they do not return as human beings but as animals or vegetables or minerals or as a river as part of their tikkun. Now usually killer unfortunately has to be reincarnated into a river. Now it's a tough tikkun. River is a very tough tikkun. Why? Because the person who reincarnated into a water basically they leave, they, they become alive for one hour, they have to die in the river, you wouldn't see the body, but it's just a spirit, and then they've been resurrected again, and that's what they do all day long. That's why when you go to a river, Rabbi Isaac Luria explained, you shouldn't drink water with your fist, with your hand, like that. You should always use a cup. And that's why Rabbi Isaac Luria say, make sure you do a special blessing once you drink that water, because many times you hear about like famous lawyer or good people that overnight become killer. What happened to them? Well, the soul within the river being injected into their soul. So that's why, what makes them crazy. So things around us are alive. Everything is alive. Now, killers can be reincarnated into a stone, minerals, diamond, all, all those things. So th this is a tough tikkun. We want to be able, when we eat, to eat the food that wouldn't affect our soul. <laughs> this is just food. Can you imagine what happened? I mean, people turn it into uh, all religious things. Okay, go ahead. It's a soul reincarnated as a stone must elevate three levels. A soul reincarnated as a vegetable must elevate two levels. A soul reincarnated as an animal must elevate one level. Okay, we have four levels. We have four levels. The lowest level is mineral, the stone. The one above that is vegetables. The one above that is animal. And the one above that is human. Okay, so there is four types of reincarnation. Person cannot go reincarnate in any of the other, other one. This is it. This is the four level. Now, what is it based on? Basically, we have vessels. That vessel, that desire is what we made from. Every person defined by their desire. The way I define you is your desire. How much you want what you want. Okay, and what is that you want? Basically, who we are, what I want, and how much I want it. That's who you are. You wake up this morning, what is it you want to do? That's what you want, that's your vessel. How much do you want it? That's a definition of who you are. Your personality, a personality of somebody is defined only by, desi by the desire. Now, there is two types of desire. There is a desire which is a selfish desire, 
And there is a tikkun of the desire. The tikkun of the desire means when a person using the desire to draw energy and goodness into this universe. That's basically what the correct desire should be. Now, for example, if a person is want to be rich and he kills somebody because he want to be rich, what ends up happening, that person has a huge desire for money. But he has to be reincarnated now for a stone. How much desire would a stone has? Almost nothing. Okay? So based on what you abuse, that's where you reincarnate. So if a person just uses a little bit of selfish desire, then he may be, become a salary. Okay? Become a salary. I know it sounds funny. If a person becomes just a little desire in the wrong way, then he can become a dog or a cat or a kosher animal. So he can be elevated. Or a person can reincarnate as a human in a tough surrounding, which means he can born into a tough neighborhood, tough country, tough situation. There is no mistake. Everything about reincarnation, there is no mistake. Whatever happened to us, no mistake. The question is, what do you do with that? Whoever you're born into, what do you do with that? So our gift, our talent, means nothing. Those are the things we're born with. Those are the things we have to share. The test that has to, go, have to happen in our life is what am I doing in my life? Am I a victim? And I look all my life for approval, validation for things that, that I do? Or I'm truly use my talent to help people. That's the bottom line. That's why when you eat, for example, meat, steak, and you meditate before to do the blessing, that steak is a cow, let's say, and the cow ate the celery. The celery was attached to a stone. So it could be you actually elevated three types of people. The killer from the stone, the one from the celery, and the whatever inside the cow. So you're able to elevate three people in one shot. Just you have to know how to do it. Okay? Good. <coughs> Keep going. A soul that returns in a mineral, what happens? When a cow eats vegetables, and the stones or minerals also in the vegetables, and then we eat this cow that was killed with a kosher slaughtering, we elevate all of these souls in that process. The souls that were in the minerals and the vegetables that the cow ate also elevate to the human kingdom. Sometimes the one who reincarnates from the mineral world, instead of coming back as a vegetable and an animal, can do it in one shot if we eat the steak with the right consciousness. Okay, so I'm just giving you an example. Go ahead. There are sometimes people who have a need to eat dirt, pica disease, or sometimes there is sand that falls into your cooking. It is because there is a need to elevate the souls in that dirt. Salt is considered a bridge between mineral and vegetable kingdoms. Between every kingdom, there is a bridge. Okay, so salt is not considered minerals in Kabbalah. Salt consider vegetables. Okay, I know it sounds weird because salt grow. Salt doesn't uh, stay the, the the way it is. If you ever been in the in the in the Dead Sea, where there's so much salt, salt spread out. Okay, salt is a mineral, but it's also considered a vegetable in Kabbalah. It's considered both world. So that's why it is the bridge. Monkeys, monkey is the bridge between human and animal. Okay, and there is other bridges that that we're not going to talk about. But you have to understand that when there is sometimes sand falling into your food and you're kind of upset that you ever eat it, you know, in the water there is sand, you actually elevate minerals. Nothing is by coincidence. Nothing is by coincidence. Keep going. Yes? Go ahead. Yes, mineral. Mineral, vegetable, yes. the bridge, salt and ocean coral. Okay. Vegetable to animal, the bridge, the Venus flytrap. Yep, exactly. <laughs> is it written weird a little bit? Okay, I'm sorry. So the idea, the idea is, is that, that we have always bridge, okay? So the monkey, but many people will think that, that, that we came from the monkeys. You have to correction, the monkeys came from us, okay? So the monkey came from us because always human is always in the top. Human is always in the top, okay? We have to remember that. Keep going. Yeah, Shabbat. On Shabbat, you can elevate everything, also on Rosh Chodesh, but there are days we cannot. 
For example, the nine days in the month of Av, we cannot elevate souls, so it can actually hurt our consciousness by eating it. So that's why there is nine days in the years that you don't want to touch meat, because your soul cannot elevate that thing. It's around Leo, around the time of, of, of the summer. But on Saturday, when you come to Saturday, when you come to eat with us, that's the best time to eat meat, because everything gets elevated. Whatever you do on Shabbat, everything gets elevated. By the way, I have to explain what it means to get elevated. For example, you want, you want to become a nicer person. You want to become less jealous. You, you need help. So what do you do? You do favor for those souls to go to a higher level, and those souls doing a favor to you, so your consciousness will get clearer. Let's say you want to know what to do with your life. You want clarity. All those things depend on the work you do with food. Now, we, do, we look at food and we think it's just a food. It's not just a food. Within food, there is basically everything. Within food, just by eating, you can correct everything. But while you're chewing it, while you're eating it, like think. You have to think. This is I'm elevating sparks of souls. And we continue. Go ahead. To summarize, two reasons to eat kosher meat. First, to clean the universe from negativity. Second, to elevate the souls reincarnated inside. It is important to be alert while you are eating and to not eat like an animal, meaning to eat with a consciousness. Sages would eat, to eat with a consciousness sages would eat and have the consciousness that the table they are eating on is an altar where there is fire coming from the table. That is why a Kabbalist will never pass a child over a table or sit a child on a table because it is like putting your child on an altar or over a fire. Okay, so now you know you would never see Kabbalists pass a, ta a kid above any table because any table is considered an altar. So what is on the altar? The food and fire. Okay, so there is fire. So we cannot just pass kids. I see many, many family go to a restaurant, put the kids on the table, play with them. Those kind of things we don't want to do because this is basically the altar. That's where the, all the time there is a fire. And every time when you sit to eat, it's good to talk about something spiritual. Not just a joke, something that has the essence of spirituality. It can be a minute or two, but it's got to be some spiritual talk. I'll let you ask questions in just a second once we finish this subject. The good news. The good news, while you are eating, you can remove your negativity because of all the souls you are elevating. Even the water you drink may be an elevation of souls who did a lot of sins. If the person is righteous, then he is elevating the souls in the food he eats or drinks. Okay, every time you drink, every time you eat, something is happening, okay? Whatever restaurant you go to, wherever you're sitting, whatever you're eating, things start to get elevated. Something, it's very important to remember that. Go ahead. But, if the person is wicked or not knowledgeable, he can actually bring the soul on level. He can eat a vegetable and return the soul to the mineral kingdom. Imagine if you take this stone and build a house for the person who ate that vegetable. There will be a bad relationship in this house. If this happens, that soul will cause the person to commit crimes or suddenly acts crazy without an ability to stop doing negative things. This is the secret of the reason that people may suddenly shift their whole belief system. Okay, this is very important for Rabbi Isaac. Louis, it's a little bit difficult to understand. The home, where are you going to live? Is the minerals there, okay? Now, some people, the Zohar explained that sometimes the, the home will not like you. The house that you choose will not like you. You will have a bad relationship with your house. And once you have a bad relationship with the house, eventually the house will kick you out. The house will kick you out. You will not be able to stay too long in that house. Three, four, five months, the house wants you out of there. And every time, by the way, every time you move to another house, you clean one reincarnation. I want you to know that. Every time that you move, from one house to another, you clean one reincarnation. Painful reincarnation. Now, second thing. The idea of elevating while you eat, it's not only important because you're saving the universe, you're saving yourself. So when you choose the office, when you choose whatever it is, the mineral talk, I know it sounds kind of bizarre, crazy, like, what do you mean, the world talking? I mean, everything is talking. The chair you're sitting on in the office talking. Everything. Everything in your life talk. Everything. Everything is a life, but we don't hear those language, you know, we don't. You go to kids' movies, you see that. 
But we are not kids, so we don't take it seriously. But everything is alive. So when you walk into the house, you have to understand your house have energy too. How do you treat your house? Sometimes people tell me, I don't know, when I go to this room, I don't feel comfortable. So when the last time you sit to have dinner in this room? Never. Nice table, beautiful, chandelier coming from the sky, amazing. You ever use this room? Never. Of course, the, 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 it's not a life. The house needs attention too. It's a stone, it needs mineral, it needs attention. You don't elevate it. You don't elevate the spark that there is there. So it's always will go against you. Now, when you eat food without the right consciousness, God forbid, whatever it is in the food is getting into you. Many of the fights happen in a restaurant. Many of the fights happen around the table when you eat dinner. I don't know if you're aware of that. A lot of the fights start with food. Because what the food get in the soul of a person in the wrong way, it make him mean. It make him cruel. And it make the person go against the other person. So when you eat, it's very important always to talk about something spiritual. To inject some spirituality somehow. Whatever the people are aware of it or not aware of it. I had the privilege to be with Michael Berg. And we were surrounding the table in New York. And we went to dinner. And it was a good atmosphere. All the teachers and everybody were there. And a few guests. And we're eating and we're having a good time. And Michael Berg not stopping to talk about the importance of study Kabbalah. Now everybody at that table agree with that. Why would he repeat it? Like everybody is like so much into Kabbalah. You don't need to speak about it. But he will repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. And you can feel like how we make an effort to elevate everything around the table. And that's, 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 that's an amazing thing. That's, an, that's what makes a difference. Always to remember that. Just few, and then we're going to go into another thing. Yes. If a person is careful enough and has the right consciousness, then there are angels around that will protect him and bring him to the right souls in the food he needs to elevate. Okay. Once you start to elevate yourself, you will not touch the wrong food. I'm not talking about tasty or not tasty. I'm talking about spiritual thing. You will start to feel that things are good for you, bad for you. Remember, vegetables, it's very easy to elevate. Very easy. Piece of cake. Vegetable is the easiest to elevate because they have small desire there. Very small desire. Very easy. Once you go to meat, very difficult. Fish, easier. Fish, chicken, cow. Okay? So I'm just telling you. I'll let you ask a few questions before... Um, you know what? Just water. Just we talk about water and that's it. Okay? Water can be very dangerous. A person who kills someone is usually reincarnated in flowing water. Why? The punishment of a killer is to die every day. Daily he is resurrected and dies in the water. That soul rests at night. That is why it is better not to go swimming at night, especially with less than ten men. Okay. I, know, I don't know if some of you used to like to do that, go to the ocean and swim in the ocean under the moonlight. I mean, very romantic, right? A lot of things. Well, <laughs> in that situation, it's not because of shark, but there is spirit. Okay, those spirits uh, basically become alive at night. It's almost like um, Harry Potter, you know, that movie, you know, and things happening. So every day, now, if you're surrounded with the, with the <coughs> spiritual group with you, and you're doing it together, okay, it can be 10 women, 10 men, okay, a group, which means the idea is to be a group, then you're okay, but you cannot go by yourself. Okay, so whatever happened, don't go to the ocean by yourself. It's not about if the shark get to you or not, it's about... The spirit that gets to you at night is not the best spirit for you. So we have to a little bit be careful, okay? Just finish with water. <coughs> yeah? Every flowing body of water has the reincarnation of a human being. Better not to drink from that water. Even a righteous person who drinks from that water and the lower part of the soul, the nephesh, gets into his body, even a righteous <coughs> person cannot fix it. This evil soul will walk into this body and not leave him alone until he does the worst thing ever. Okay, this is very serious. I know it sounds like it's just water. I'm not talking about water from the... I'm talking about not from a well, just running water, okay? Like it can be a river, whatever is moving water, okay? Running water. So the idea is to get to a point that you just don't do it. I know it's fun. I did it, I did it a few times. Sometimes you get lucky, but you don't want to... to, to to trust uh, that everything will be okay. If it's not getting okay one time, this nephesh will not leave you alone. Will just not leave you alone. It will go after you until you do something negative. Running water, skip it. 
Okay? We don't have river here. Nobody's going to drink water from the river here. But I'm sure there is places in the United States where people drink from the river. No? It's got to be some places here. I know in Israel we have one that people drink from. It's in the north. And it's very sweet water. But you have a cup. Take a cup. Okay? Then you save. Go ahead. Rabbi Isaac Luria would drink from the river and from a well because before he drank, he would look at the water and meditate so strongly that the negative spirits or the nefesh would run away. But he would warn his students never to drink directly from the water with their mouths. So Rabbi Isaac Luria, because of his levels, he, he did different things. Well, not in that level. He was able with meditation to put the spirit away. He could see actually the, the spirit in the water. Okay, but we are not in that level, so please. I mean, I'm not worried. In Florida, I never saw a river where people would drink a water from. I don't think so, right? I mean, there is no water for drinking in Florida. It's, uh, and people are afraid of the alligator anyway. So, so that's, that's, that's good cover. Okay? Go ahead. If you have to drink, look at the water and meditate for a few moments, and then drink by cupping your hand because you need to have a vessel. There is a whole meditation before drinking water in the Sha'ar Hamitzvot. Water from the faucet is safe, but some Kabbalists did take some water from the faucet and dump a little bit out of their cup before they drank it. Okay, so the idea, the idea is good to have a cup if you're lost and you have to drink something, so meditate a little bit before and meditate that this is your cup. But whatever it is, you don't drink like a horse or like a dog or something like that because that's for sure not safe. Okay, you don't do that, okay, you don't do that, okay, or, or, or from a waterfall, you know, there's a place in Israel with a waterfall, amazingly sweet water, you see, it's the best to drink the water, don't do that, okay, I know it's fun, but don't do that, okay, and it's kind of not cool to go with a cup to those places, with the waterfall, you come with a cup, you fill it up and drink, you want to drink, but I know that it's better not to know, but it's better to know too, okay, so I'm sorry to destroy some of your romantic dreams, but uh, it's good to know. If there is any question about uh, food, kosher food, meat, or water, please. Water fountains. If it's suggested that it says that some Kabbalists drank from the faucet, but obviously held we, we, had a we vessel. Drink. We okay. We can drink. No problem. We drink. Only problem is running water, because there is killers reincarnate. Yes. They, they, need, they need at least a string of meat or something, like, they cannot, so, they cannot, no, uh, I cannot tell you, I'm not here to teach you how to eat healthy, I'm here to teach you how to live a spiritual life, part of being spiritual is to elevate the meat, at least during Saturday, and Saturday is a day where can you elevate a little bit of the meat, you don't have to eat a lot, but you have to eat a bit that can elevate you. Now, you want to do it, it's okay, you don't want to do it, it's okay too, you know, we cannot force it to do it. Is chicken considered meat? Chicken is considered meat, yes. It's an it's a elevated meat because it's fly. Okay, it's a, whatever can fly above the ground, like duck or chicken, is elevated. Whatever stuck to the ground, okay, it's very hard to elevate it. So birds is very easy to elevate. Fish is always in the water, it doesn't touch the ground. For example, if there is things that touch the ground in the ocean, impossible to elevate. You cannot elevate whatever is on the ground in the ocean. Very difficult. But yes. Chicken eggs. I mean, like that's that's also. That. That's that's yes. Uh, yeah, they can eat eggs. That's a great idea. I didn't think about it. Oh, they allowed to eat eggs? Vegetarians? Okay, that's good. Oh, they don't. Okay, <laughs> vegetarians. Feed eggs. Okay, winner. We found the winner. Eggs is okay. Eat eggs. Put the eggs on a pizza and you're good. Yes. Uh, question. I don't really understand the the concept of a, of the bridge. The the, the bridge. Oh, bridge. Okay. What is that like some sort of oh, transitional thing? No, the bridge. The bridge is mean that between human to animal, gotta be an animal that will connect the two levels. So the levels of animals versus the an, uh, uh, level of human have to have a bridge of animal, and the animal that doing it is monkeys. That's why monkeys are very similar to human beings. They are the closest. Not the dolphin, the monkeys. Okay? Many people say the dolphin with the brain and everything. No, the monkeys is the closest things to human beings. Now, between uh, animal to vegetables, you have the, the flower. What's the name? The Venus uh, trap, I think it's called. Right? The, the, the one that, that eats bugs because it actually has a personality, but it's still a vegetable. Okay? 
And between uh, vegetables to minerals, you have the salt. Salt is a very important thing. Salt is a very elevated mineral, you know? And many, many times a lady will wear a ring that has diamond on it, okay? What we call it to die for, right? To die for that diamond. And some people kill for that diamond, and the people who kill for that diamond have to reincarnate again in a diamond. It's kind of, this is all kind of weird, like how it works, like everything is going around, you, know, you cannot, we cannot cheat the system. The bottom line about reincarnation, you cannot cheat the system. What are you going to do? If people go to prison, that's not the punishment for what they did. This prison system, which I don't understand yet, how does it exactly work, people go to prison, what is happening? Nothing is really happening, they just lock them there, and that's it. They don't grow spiritually from it. And they don't have a chance to do their tikkun. It's terrible. They cannot do their tikkun. I'm not saying you release the killer. I don't have a solution for that. But I'm saying we have a problem. Because they have eventually, even if you went to prison for 50 years, you still have to go and reincarnate and do your tikkun. Whatever you did here in this physical universe means nothing compared to what you're supposed to do later on. So a person went to prison for stealing, for killing, okay. You still have to reincarnate. Like, it doesn't mean a lot, whatever is happening in this physical universe. It's, it's, it's sad. I mean, of course, every, every pain and suffering that you went through, you get less pain and suffering in your reincarnation. What is pain and suffering? Every time you try to reach to your pocket and you look for a dime, and you find a quarter, consider a suffering. Even this consider suffering. So everything like that, or more than that, of course, consider pain. Now, we're going to talk about food. And that's a meditation from Shara Mitzvot from Rabbi Isaac Luria. And that's what he say. Go ahead. Please. We have 32 teeth, which correspond to 22 Hebrew letters and the 10 spirot. It also corresponds to the word lev, which means heart. Okay. When you eat, I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot. But when you eat, you have to understand you're chewing with your 32 levels. Now, these 32 levels of consciousness are both energy. One is called the tree of life, or what we call the ten spherot, and the other is the 22 Hebrew alphabet. So when you chew your bagel tomorrow morning, I'll start chewing it, ten spherot, 22 letters, together the energy is wonderful. Okay? Uh, if you want to know about the ten spherot, 22 letters, please ask your teacher, he will show you. It's wonderful. Okay, let's continue. When we eat, one, meditate on the Hebrew letter Aleph. If you cut it in the middle, you are left with a Yud and Vav on two sides, which add to number 32. When you eat, meditate on closing the Aleph. Okay. Okay. Now. If you take the letter Aleph, that's how the letter Aleph look like, okay? Letter Aleph, like in Greek, Alpha, Aleph is the first Hebrew letters. I want you to meditate like I'm dividing the Aleph to two. If I'm opening to two, what I'm going to get will be here and here. That's what I'm going to get. Rabbi Isaac Luria teaching us a secret. The, basically, what we have from the letter Aleph, this is 16, and this is 16, because Vav is 6 and Yud is 10. Together, the letter Aleph, the reason you want to meditate on the letter Aleph, because the letter Aleph represents your mouth, because you have 16 teeth above and 16 teeth below. Now, what does it mean for us? Okay, I meditate on the letter Aleph. The idea that everything that we do with food, make a difference. If you want to change and you don't feel like you're changing, you want to be better and you don't feel like you become better, you want to share and you don't feel like you share, you want clarity and you don't feel like you have clarity, while the person starts eating, starts chewing the food, chewing the food, think about the letter Aleph, all those meditations together, things start to change, things start to elevate. You cannot just things that just by eating, you're eating a physical food. This is out of the question. We cannot think that just if you eat, then it's food. 
many people say, I get fat, and too much calorie. It's all true. But the main idea, the spark of light within the food that can help me change. Every person want to change. But many people don't know that through the food, things can be a, make a difference. And that's why a person has to think about the letter Aleph. Okay? The letter Aleph, that's the way it looks like. Did we cover all the five points? Okay. Two, oh. important to meditate on the teeth and your cheeks while you are eating. <laughs> okay. Three, meditate on the Aleph again. Four, meditate on separating the good from the bad. Very important. Number four, when you eat, you have to understand the physical food. Every physical food has the 1%. And the non-physical part of the food is the 99%. So when you chew, the purpose of chewing the food, I mean, think about it. God couldn't create us in a way that we just eat the 99%. Why do we have to chew the food? After all, in the time of Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were able just to look at the food and eat it. Why we have to get into a point, why we have to get into a point that we even chew the food? Because chewing the food is chewing the negativity, the 1%, the physicality, and what's left is the spirituality. Now let's think together. If there is area in your life, and try it, try it this week, don't wait for a couple of weeks. If there is area in your life that you want to get better, you feel you're not getting better in this area. Whatever you try to do, it doesn't work. You did your pray, you did your anapakoch, you did your meditation, you did, you did, you did, you did. But you know what? It's stuck. Things are not going as, as it should. It's stuck. Now what, what should you do? One of the ways to get a correction, to do a tikkun, is by eating. When you eat the food, when you eat the food and you're chewing it, you have to meditate. I'm removing the dark part of my life. And I'm taking the light from that food. And that light that I'm getting from that food, that light eventually will support me. Now it's very important to understand... You know, that many times, many times, you know, um, if a person, you know, there is a story about Rabbi Isaac Luya, and uh, it's a very sad story, unfortunately, and it's a true story. Uh, he was invited to perform a wedding, and uh, he was sitting next to the groom, and when the groom was eating the chicken, uh, he, he choked himself from the bones of the chicken and uh, the chicken bone, so, and he died on the spot. And of course the family go to Rabbi Isaac Luria and say, you are the greatest Kabbalist sitting next to my son. How can it happen? How can it happen? How can it happen? And he said to them, I want to tell you a story. You know, your son is a great man. What happened? Your son in another lifetime, were a righteous man. But he did one little mistake. One little mistake. He hurt that person that came as a reincarnation in a chicken. So he asked the Creator to come back and just to do this one correction, one tikkun. And the only way that he do this tikkun is when the chicken will come on the table, he will eat it, and then he will die. But when he died, he didn't die as a bad connotation to that. He died because he finished his karma, he finished his tikkun, he finished what he's supposed to finish. And that's why he had to elevate his soul to the next level, and by him elevate the soul to the next level, the chicken has to elevate himself to the next level. So both of them correct themselves at the same time. Now, of course, Hopefully it never happened to anybody, but from that story we learn that there is no mistake. That there is no mistake. And food business is not an easy business. You know, it's what we do almost every day. Either we're chewing a gum, we eat a cookie, we drink a coffee, we drink a tea. Food becomes a habit. It's become like a hobby of people. People eating. People eating all day long. What is people doing? Eating. If people could eat all day long, it would be like amazing. Eating, drinking, eating, drinking. Eat. People work to make enough money so they can eat better, right? Everything at the end of the day is about food. Vacation is what's for dinner, right? You choose an hotel, what they serve for lunch. You go to pizza, I want to see how healthy is the pizza. All day long, it ends up with one thing, food. 
Food can become an addiction. Person can become addicted to food. Cannot, cannot, I'm not eating because I enjoy it. I'm eating it because I need it. Why? I don't even know, but I'm eating it. Because my, my mouth has to move. People are watching movies. They eat. It used to be a little popcorn. I remember the popcorn like 25 years ago. It used to be a little thing, like square, like that. This was popcorn. Today you get like your house there. I'm telling you. I want to see a movie. Not only they gave me the things, I can fill it up. So my friend is a smart businessman. What do say? Hey, is it okay to take my, my next portion instead of coming back to you? So they gave him a bag with popcorn and his box with the popcorn. So you go with two bags like that. Can you imagine? And then beside the little uh, peanuts with chocolate covering and the pizza and the, the, the pretzel with the mustard. We're eating. We are non-stop eating. And then the people who are eating, they find themselves in the gym. We're not hunting animal anymore. So there is no elevation of the light. It's not just that it's funny. It's, this is what's happening in our universe. The food is a very serious business. It's how you can do your tikkun through food. You can eat food and make your tikkun. But... If you're eating just for eating, 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 eventually it will affect your life in a bad way. Cholesterol, all those problems, it's not things that come just by eating meat. It's things that come from stress. Why? Because when a person eats the meat and he doesn't know the elevation, otherwise he wouldn't need that much meat. He just needs a little piece of meat to elevate that soul there, and that's it. He doesn't need the rest of the steak. He just needs that part to elevate it. Everybody knows, it's very important to understand. The amount of food we're eating, people always ask, how can I lose weight? You only lose weight if you cut a portion. Whoever tells you you lose weight if you start eating healthy, I'm sorry to insult some of the nutrition people here, you don't lose weight just by eating healthy. You're not. You have to eat less. You only eat less, you will lose weight. Okay? This size of the steak, this size, or this size, you're going to lose weight. I don't care if it's organic and this size, you're not going to lose weight. Organic cow, if you eat the old cow, if you weight yourself, it will be you and the cow. <laughs> Very simple. That's, that's what the weight will be, okay? If you eat organic, all grain pizza that weight, I don't know, uh, two pounds, it will be two pounds more because you just, it's inside your body. Makes sense? Simple, okay? So, you want to do diet always, portion, you really don't need to elevate all of it. A piece elevates the whole person. So, when we elevate too much, so what happened? We already elevate the person. But what we're getting, we're getting the 1% part of the food into our system. That makes a person sick. According to Kabbalists, and now think about food, most people get sick from food, from the way they don't have to eat. Do you know that most of the way to cure the body is to fix the way we eat? It's not just, again, portion. is what you eat is sometimes doesn't match your body, doesn't match your soul. You know, you have to feel. Do I really like it? Do I really like it? You know, people don't ask. People drink beer, okay? I never like beer, but some people are addicted to beer. You know, beer, football season, whoop, cold, whoop, whoop, Budweiser or whatever beer. And then go back to your memory. Do you really like beer originally? It's bitter, right? But people are still drinking it. There's no elevation. There's addiction. There's no elevation. When you're addicted to something, you don't elevate. You only elevate spark when you have a consciousness, when you eat on the Aleph, like we, t- we study, you have to understand, it's very important. And then separate the good from the bad. You always need to separate the good from the bad. Am I eating lettuce? Yes. But I'm eating the lettuce so I can elevate that light. Now, if you eat a lot of vegetables, that doesn't affect you that much because the level of desire there is low. I know you want to eat a lot of protein, but protein, too much of protein, you cannot elevate it. Okay? It's very important to start to balance ourselves. Very important to balance ourselves. Now bread, what is wrong with bread? Bread, uh, it's not only bread, they have, they have mineral in it. I don't know if you're aware, like, like uh, uh, what do you have? They have salt, they have uh, uh, yeast. Is yeast is mineral? What is yeast? What is yeast? Is it a chemical? Is it a chemical? Huh? Fungus? Okay, I didn't know it's a fungus. Okay, fungus. Yeast is a fungus. Okay, how did they make this fungus? It's growing in the ground or? <laughs> is it chemical? No, it's an organism. What? It's an organism. It grows by itself. Grow by itself. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe it is mineral. I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, we can only elevate what we can elevate. So before you eat, 
Yeah. Now you can elevate any type of food, but just before you go to the next falafel or the next pizza or the next steak, stop. Do I want the physical or I want the non-physical? If you want the physical, it will affect you in a bad way eventually. Physically. Not just spiritually, physically. All right, and the fifth point. Meditate on swallowing what you eat because in swallowing you are removing the spark of negativity and elevating what you eat. Okay, so the idea, if you're not in a rush, today it's very difficult to do it, it's good to swallow and while we swallow, to meditate that what you swallow, again you elevate. Food is a very serious business. Okay, remember, you want to stay healthy physically, healthy spiritually, it's all about food eventually. Go ahead. Washing your hands removes poverty from your life and then we can connect to the bread, which is sustenance. Also, there are souls in that water as well that you are elevating. Okay, washing your hand before food is not washing the hand for cleaning your hand. You wash your hand, there is a, most of you know how to do it. Okay, it's two times on each side. And when you wash your hand, you actually elevate your hand to a higher level so you can connect to the bread. You're only doing it when you eat bread. Only when you eat bread. Okay, on Shabbat. On Shabbat, we must do everything with the right consciousness. We must be super excited because there is such an opportunity to elevate anything we want. Any soul we want. Every fish we eat on Shabbat is the soul of a righteous person. So we can get all the help by eating the food. There is a story in the Talmud about Rabbi Alazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. He was so fat and he was judged for it. So he took his fat and cut it out of his body and put it in the sun to show not one worm came out of that fat. He elevated so many souls through what he ate. Well, there is a big lesson in this story. A big lesson in this story. And for, two lessons actually. The first lesson is Shabbat, Saturday. Many people who come here to Shabbat, who come here to Saturday, to the weekend, not always come with the excitement that they should come in here. Now, when we are here on Shabbat, from Friday night to Saturday night, you can elevate everything you ever wanted. It's a gift. Nothing is better like that. The food, the pray, the meditation, everything can be elevated. Any food that comes on your table, you can elevate it. Shabbat is a, it's a, it's a super train. It's express to the light. Very easy. Okay? In Shabbat, by the way, you can eat extra food. It's okay. It doesn't affect you. You can eat as much as you want. During the week, no. But during Shabbat, you can celebrate. Eat as much as you want. 24 hours of celebration. It will not affect you. After Shabbat, it's a different story. Some people say, how come I gain weight on Shabbat? No, you don't gain weight on Shabbat. You gain weight on the six days of the week. Okay? If, or during the six days, you eat very little. Then on Shabbat, then trust me, it's the best diet. That's a Kabbalistic diet. It's usually work. Now, the son of Rabbi Shimon, his name is Rabbi Lazar. He was, he's considered the, the fattest Tana. Which means in the time of the Tanaim, 2,000 years ago, in the time of the Mishnah and the, and the Zohar, the people who lived there were very powerful pe people. It's in the same time of Jesus. It's in the same time of all the Tanaim. Those people were able to resurrect people from dying. But he was very fat. So everybody judged him. They judged him like, if he's fat, he's got to be non-spiritual. Because he's eating all day. This guy was unique. He was able to eat all day long. We are not there yet. Okay, I want to make sure. We are not there yet. He was able to elevate all day long, eat bread, cookie, grapes, avocado, okay? Everything that he ate, he elevated. But eventually, the body grew because he was eating two loaf of bread in the morning. That's how we start the morning. So he want to prove to everybody that he's not, nothing is wrong with him. Because we know that after the person die and the person go to the grave, the body decompose. Why the body decompose? Because for all those time of desire to receive oneself alone when a person been buried so and it's important to bury the person many people believe you burn the body and mausoleum the bottom line the best way for the soul is to bury whatever happened to people that in the past leave the past behind you look toward the future right now from now on remember burial is a very important thing it's a time when the soul separates from the body now righteous people their body doesn't go to that procedure of decompose because they never took things for themselves so Rabbi Lazar tried to prove them by cutting part of his fat and he showed them that nothing happened that's what he did so the story is telling us two things many times we judge 
fat people, you know. We are sure that these fat people can never be spiritual. Okay? We don't only judge fat people. We can judge something even rich people. If you see somebody now park a Lamborghini outside, okay, with a Versace boot, uh, golden belt, uh, watch on both sides with diamond, 150,000 each, and everything else, I don't know what else, jacket and thing, okay? And you walk inside there and they walk, and, and they are fat, very fat, okay? You would judge them. He said, and I will tell you, this is the, one of the most spiritual people I ever met. <laughs> spiritual. You're going to give them one look, 10 seconds. You give them 10 second chance. 20 seconds, they're gone. They're dead. They're fine. This is so over for you. But you're going to give them attention because they have nice watch. That's it. But spiritually, we're not going to think they're spiritual. They fat, Lamborghini, Diamond, all this. Why we are like this? Because we judge people by the physical. We judge people by the 1% because we live in Malchut. We live in the physical universe. So the only way I can judge is physical. Five senses. Whatever I see, that's what it is. But it's not. It's not. I don't know what's in the person's heart. I don't know what's going on inside. What really matters is not how much diamond, how poor the person is. Is every poor person is spiritual? No. Is every poor person is good? No. Is every rich person is bad? No. We associate money or success with no spiritual behavior, which is wrong. We associate fat, can ever be spiritual. Thin and clean shirt, got to be spiritual. Right? See, clean shirt, that, that's got to be spiritual. No, actually, that's your part, and we're going to steal all your money soon. Okay? That's why you're wearing everything nice. So, you have to understand that, that we cannot judge things just by the outside, okay? If you look at Rav Ashlag, in the picture of Rav Ashlag, everything is perfect, Rav Ashlag is always put things, but if you look at the students of Rav Ashlag, Rav Banvan, different. Very different. Very different. Not like Rav Ashlag. We cannot judge by the 1%. And one of the things that we do the most, unfortunately, with human beings, we judge by the 1%. And we're going to do a lot of mistakes. We get married many times by the 1%. That's the worst thing to do. Worse. That's why people who start when they don't have money, when things are not going well, when, and they marry each other because they like each other as who they are, that's the best. You know, Karen once say about the Rav, Karen say, I would marry the Rav if the Rav wouldn't be the Rav of Kabbalah Center. If the Rav would be a taxi driver, I would marry the Rav. That's what Karen Berg said. This is beautiful. Because you don't marry the 1%. You marry the soul. You marry the core. That's what it's really all about. We many times judge people by the look. And Rabbi Lazar, let's think about ourselves today. Rabbi Lazar would walk in here. He's about, he was about 320 pounds, just to, let, to get you an idea. He's walking inside here, and, he, and, I, and I'm presenting him. This is the most spiritual person ever you're going to meet. Most people, especially in Boca, would say, right? Why don't you teach him how to go on a diet, you know, or to go on a treadmill? Because that's not it, my friend. That's not it. The goal is not just good looking. Okay, it's very important to understand. Okay, just one more thing before we're closing it. Yes? That is why it is a tradition, especially in Sephardic homes, that when a righteous person comes to your house, it is important to serve food because when a righteous person eats in your home, that righteous person can elevate the entire home. Sometimes you need to eat just out of respect in a person's home. You can elevate whatever you want, even more so in the month of Elul. Okay. When you visit in people's home, I don't know, in, it's a tr very serious tradition. Let's say if you go to my mom, the way to show love okay, is there got to be food right away. You got to put food everywhere. All the table got to be covered. You wouldn't leave a spot on the table that would be empty. And it's almost embarrassment if they don't have food. Now, if there is a righteous person come, okay, I remember the first time that, that I met the Rav, and I told my mom, I met a very great person. I met the Rav. I met Karen. I met righteous people. And she said, do me a favor. I'm going to cook something for them. Make sure they're eating for my food. And I didn't know that the importance of it and I remember I come with some dishes, I'm embarrassed, but I'm going to a lecture with some dishes, and I put it there, like a few dishes, and I said to my teacher, who I was just a student, I said, listen, my mom, 
is cooking, you know, fish and this and this and that. And uh, the Rav is eating only kosher and all that. And Karen said to the Rav, it's okay, eat from the fish and elevate it for them. And the Rav did the meditation. My mom was very happy. I called my mom and said, eat from your food. Oh, it was a big celebration. Because they know that by elevating, by elevating somebody come to your house, the righteous people, even they eat a piece of bread, a cookie, uh, whatever they eat there, vegetables, they actually elevate the entire house going to the next level. Eating food in somebody's home, fixing everything. Fixing, a, a righteous person can fix everything. That's why, you know, uh, for the chevre, for the teachers, they always want, you know, Karen and the Rav to come to do barbecue with them in the house. There is selfish agenda here because they're actually thinking, listen, if you come to my house and eat, I'll give you all the food, please. I know the whole house will be elevated, different level, different dream, everything change, everything change. The whole structure of the house change. And that's why it's good always to have something in your house that will be spiritual, that you can elevate all, all the soul. What? Sephardic, Sephardic are uh, people who were born in Spain or, and went all the way to Bulgaria and Greek and Istanbul or North African people, people born in North Africa. They have more the tradition of more like Arabs kind of form. They, 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 like, they like to welcome people on the table all the time. Uh, Sephardic also mean uh, people who practice Kabbalah from the word Sephard, which is sword, which is secret. That's, that's what it means. Okay? Yes. I'm curious about something. I, I, I guess this is more in the Middle Eastern philosophy, but there's a, a, um, a lot of things written about how a, a warrior's soul is in a sword. And isn't it like a sword, like a lower, would be considered a lower incarnation? I don't understand. A person with a sword? I no, don't understand. Like, um, in, in Japan or in China, the warrior, the, the, they used to make a the, they used sword, to make yeah. so, swords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the sword was supposed to contain the soul of the warrior. There is, there is, uh, this is another subject. Uh, the, the time finished, right? I mean, we have one hour already. So it's, it's a good question for next week. I mean, the sword, um, you go into a deep conversation now. There is four level our person can die to elevate himself. So sword is one of them. And the sword, the Israelite sword, used to have the name of God on it, the Tachigamitan. And when they kill somebody, yes, his soul elevate right, right away to the, to the highest level. So even the war was kind of spiritual. But it's a subject we should talk about. That's one of the subjects we should talk about, a, a way to die. We can call it a way to die. If you want to know about it, we're going to share it.